Lithia Park, when we first moved to Ashland, did not seem like it would be uh, much of a hotbed of wildlife activity. There's a guy leading Tai Chi classes over here. He's a friend of mine. But there's a few very interesting subjects and creatures that frequent Lithia Park that over time I've come to appreciate much more. I got beautiful images of a screech owl in this tree last fall. It was like some of the best light I've ever had. The bird never moved an inch the whole time I was here, but the light moved constantly. You know, I got about 15 seconds of light where it just kissed the bird's eyes and the face. One evening, there's two fledglings sitting right here on this tree. It was just absolutely the most beautiful thing in the world. If you want to get something magical, you, you look for light, you look for, for all these different things that hopefully can come together for you once in a while. I think that's a sapsucker, actually. That is a red-breasted sapsucker. It's pretty, pretty bad light. I'm gonna try and sneak around the other side. There'll be a very low percentage of good shots here, but I think I would've gotten a couple. Funny thing about woodpeckers is they move their heads at about 10,000 miles a second. This is one of my more favorite spotted owl images. They live in old growth forest in these spectacular trees that are hundreds if not thousands of years old. I love the tree, I love the composition. I love it captures the essence of a spotted owl and the essence of where spotted owls live. There are a lot of owls in my work now and there probably always will be. To this day, I still feel privileged every time I'm around. What are we hoping to see today, Dan? We're hoping to see uh, river otters or possibly a couple different raptors. Uh, really, I never know what's gonna show up here. My name is Dan Elster, and I'm a fine art wildlife photographer based in Southern Oregon. Southern Oregon's pretty rich. Most of my photography is within a couple hours of home. Let's see if we get lucky. There's a river otter coming right toward us. You see him? Okay, I see two river otters out there. There's a great blue heron across the way there too. A lot of people think it's like a sacrifice to sit and wait for a while, like to show up, where I think it's like this privilege to just be out here and I love it. This river otter's climbing up on a branch over here. He's probably got a fish. When I first started doing wildlife photography, it was more about just capturing an animal on film. Where now it's become my art form, my form of expression. There's a spotted toy right behind you. Um, I don't know if it'll be sharp, I'm kind of doubting it, but I got him. When I'm taking pictures of wild animals, I am really trying to tell their story. I'm trying to see a little bit more than, than what maybe a casual observer would see in a raccoon, or a fox, or an owl. I want more people to be aware of what's around them. I don't think a lot of people take the time to look and understand and think about what's around us and what's worthy of protecting. My family's made up of my wonderful wife, Patty, my daughter, Savannah, and my son, Forrest, and our Golden Retriever River. That's right, buddy. Two hands all the time, right? There's certainly a joy in raising two kids, and I'm constantly teaching them about wildlife. I hope they can carry the torch on 
the love of wildlife and maybe helping other people uh, develop a love for wildlife. I always know there's another image to be had or another memorable neat encounter with an animal or a bird or whatever it may be. That is what drives me. A lot of things have to come together for me. I need a subject to cooperate. I need light. I need my equipment to perform. But they come together often enough to keep me going. I enjoy it no matter what. Even if I'm having a lousy day in the field, I still just feel lucky to be out there and just watch things unfold. My last good image is what makes me strive for the next good image. <laughs>